Well, hello there. So, a bit of an update on the whole G5 hacking tosh thingy. First of all, I almost have this um, iMac, this 24 inch iMac uh, finished. The display is working now, perfectly fine. It has HDMI audio too. I'm using the original amplifier from the board on the iMac. So what I did is I cut the uh, logic board in half, sort of, and I kept all the US all the ports in the back, which you can see right there. Uh, they're still there, the original ports. And well, I passed a an HDMI cable through there. Power cable is the original since I'm using the original power supply on it so uh, on the logic board I simply uh, made the original amplifiers audio amplifiers because it, ha it has two stereo amplifiers because it has four speakers so two on each side uh, and it also has a, an active crossover so it sends certain fre frequencies to uh, each pair of speakers issue is um, I left the Wi-Fi, sorry, the airport uh, antennas uh, hanging around loose inside and they just so happened to touch the Texas Instruments um, switching chip that regulates the current for the USB ports and I'm using the voltage regulation inside the board itself so I have the PP5 uh, S5 rail working so yeah that shorted it out and it uh killed the the uh, switching chip for the usb ports so i have no current limit on usb ports now so i have to wire them in directly to the 5 volt rail um i lost so the thing sent 12 volts through the 5 volt uh rail so I lost one of the amplifiers, so what I did is, I oh, I, and I also lost the crossover. So what I did is I completely, uh, this, uh, completely disabled the one of the amplifiers, and I used the other one for stereo. So I, uh, I, only, I left two speakers only, only the uh, outer ones and they work and it it sounds really good and now i have system preferences open here that's on the g5 down there talk about that later uh so yeah i have sysprefs open and as you can see uh that's the name the chinese board lvds controller thing uh gives sorry that's not i wanted to change exposure there we go um, that is the name, the name that the Chinese, uh, LBDS controller board gives to the display, but as you can see, it has HDMI audio. And in fact, if I turn up the volume, I have the buttons poking out of the, uh, RAM door. I still have to, uh, adapt the RAM board to have the buttons like firmly pushed in there. But if I turn the volume up on the board, on the controller board for the display. By the way, this this LCD panel it's uh, 1920 by 1200, 24 inches, and it's an IPS panel and it looks glorious. So let's see. There we go. It sounds quite good, and that's like the volume is just ridiculous. Yeah, that sounds a bit distorted, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, it it actually works. Uh, next thing, I don't know. I got the entire system working. Uh, so let's take a look at that. I only have uh, two gigabytes of memory in it, so it is really slow right now. It is like a snail. Uh, but there it is. It thinks it's a mid 2010 Mac Pro. It thinks it has an i7 for some reason. Uh, it's a Xeon. It's an X. 50, sorry, no, it's an X30, 
I don't remember what Xeon it is. Well, it's an ELM Xeon, uh, socket 1156. Frequency is right. Uh, I only have two gigs of RAM, as I said, and my R9 to 80 got here, so there it is. And it all works flawlessly. The displays, as you can see, 1920 by 1200. It thinks it's a 26 inch, but I don't care. And there's my mechanical hard drive that I'm using. Uh, yeah, but uh, that's nice, I guess. It works perfectly fine. Um, and yeah, something else I wanted to show you. Let me open up the system profiler. Uh, no, no, not system preferences. You dumb twit. Uh, as you can see, it's really slow with 2 gigs of RAM. I do not recommend this to anyone. I am getting hopefully 16 gig, 16, 16 or 32, I'm not sure, but um, let's open the system profiler, I wanted to show you something else, uh, so Bluetooth, look at that, we have, well, it's called PowerMac G5 for now, and yeah, so the, there's my Bluetooth address, if you ever see it while walking down, down the street, you know you're next to my house. Uh, so, yeah, it just so happens that this iMac was completely completely decked out uh, when I got it, and it had a Bluetooth card in it. And as I found out, it, it, is just, it just uses USB signaling. So what I did is I put, so here's the G5, it's almost finished. Um, I have to wire in the fans, all of the fans, so it's running passive right now except for the GPU, which is there. Um, so I have to wire up the fans and the front panel, that's it. Uh, oh, also the PSU of course has its original fans running. So what I did is, let's see if we can get, um, nope. We cannot get any picture from there. So, um, I simply uh, made a USB uh, connector for the header, one of the headers on the motherboard, which had two USB lines. Uh, I'll show you later. If you got that reference, please get off the internet right now. Uh, but, so yeah, four wires, USB. It's power and the two data lines. This one's for the front USB, and the other one goes here to this, which is the Bluetooth card from the iMac, right there. <laughs> and yeah, my battery is low. So yeah, look at that. It's just solder there, and it works. And instead of using, a, it takes 3.3 .3 volts instead of uh, 5 volts. So what I did is I used two diodes. <laughs> so I dropped uh, the voltage to to 3.6 volts, and it it works. I've seen people running them at 5 volts, and they don't give a toss. It it runs perfectly fine. So yeah, that's so the system is almost finished. Uh, these wires right here are from a fan that I use when it overheats, uh, <laughs> because it's running passively. Uh, I needed some heat shrink. Uh, I, I ran out of heat shrink and I couldn't do the wiring for the fans, so I needed to use that in the meanwhile. So yeah, uh, I have I just have left uh, I just have the fans left and that's it. Uh, and well, on the front panel and on the iMac side of things, which it's it's just a display. Um, I'm going to throw a USB hub in it, so I can use the three USB ports in the back, and I can use the webcam, sorry, the EyeSight camera. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm going to be able to use that. Uh, I also put in a USB adapter, USB to IDE adapter for the optical drive, and it actually works. So the issue is that it's USB. So that would make five USB ports. I don't know if there are uh, five port USB hubs out there. If I can find one, uh, I'll get it. But 
I don't know, like, nobody really uses an optical drive anymore, uh, including me, so... I mean, I do use them from time to time, but uh, I just use my laptop. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the thing. It it works perfectly fine. I'm really impressed. Uh, the uh, the fact that even you know, High Sierra, I'm still running the beta <laughs> for some reason. Uh, the final version came out like uh, three days ago. When was it? When did it come out? Yeah, it's the 2nd of, of October. So yeah, a week ago. Uh, it came out like a week ago. Or so. Uh, so yeah. There's the... I don't know. There's the whole Hackintosh setup. Well, it's, it's not complete yet. So I'm going to use this mouse. Because I actually love this mouse for um, graphical user interfaces. This is an Apple Mighty Mouse. And the keyboard is just because I don't want to have lots of wires running down to that. Oh, also, I forgot to show you the back ports of the uh, G5. They're done, too. Look at that. It's, that's the original Ethernet port. That's the original USB ports also work. And that's the extent of it. Um, Firewire doesn't work. I need to find a Firewire PCI card. Uh, that's compatible with... Hi Sierra. I don't know if Hi Sierra even supports regular PCI anymore. Uh, digital audio doesn't work either, and the antenna ports I haven't, I haven't even put them in yet. So what you can see through them is the um, network activity lights, uh, which is quite cool. But I want to put the antennas back there. Uh, the airport antenna is not going to do anything because. Well, it doesn't have Wi-Fi. I, I don't like putting Wi-Fi in my desktops. It just fills up a slot and that's it. And well, yeah, the Bluetooth antenna I'm actually gonna use for, you know, the Bluetooth card down there. Uh, I'm actually gonna use the original antennas and all that. Uh, so yeah, that's about it for the thing. It's, you can see it's just, it's working and really well too. So I'll see if I can get uh, no, I was talking about this. So the keyboard is just provisional. Like this is not uh, the definitive keyboard that I'm gonna use. I'm actually gonna buy one of those cheapo mechanical keyboards, like a ten keyless uh, from China, and I'm gonna put like I'm I don't really know what keycaps to put on it, and I sure as heck I'm not gonna leave them. Uh, not gonna leave the stock keycaps on it. Uh, I think I'm going to put uh, either white keycaps or like rainbow colored like pastel uh, keycaps with like white surrounds. Uh, it's it's going to be one of those keyboards that have the aluminum uh, base so you know it fits with the whole Macintosh theme. Uh, again, a 10 keyless because I have almost no space uh, on my desk. So yeah, it's the, the numpad. I never use the numpad. So yeah, and it, it'll just be the keyboard and the mouse connected to the iMac there, and then a USB cable running down to the Power Mac, which this isn't an, an iMac anymore, and this isn't a Power Mac anymore, but yeah, you know what I mean. So, hmm. uh, that's it for now. Uh, so yeah, bye.